my son is never going to know his father, except for through memories and pictures and stories. That's how we'll keep Norman alive. And that's how we'll continue to honor him. If we forgot about him, what was the point of it all? First met at a party, just kind of saw each other. And then uh, over the next like year, year and a half, we'd seen each other again and again. And I actually kept dreaming about him. I didn't really know who he was. I just knew that there was something about him I really liked. It was just an instant, you know, love. I mean, I was completely in love with him. I knew my life had changed. I knew I was looking at the guy I was going to marry and I was going to have kids with and be happy with. We had that fairy tale type bromance, the one that doesn't exist, you know, where we're best friends. Everything we did, we did with passion. We talked to each other about everything. We were incomplete when we weren't around each other. And he always said we'd be lost if we didn't have each other. And it was just, that's just the way we were. It was something I knew he wanted to do since he was in high school. He wanted to be in the military. You know, my first initial thought is, oh my God, no. Because you know, you hear all these horror stories about the war. Honestly, I was not a very patriotic person at the time. I really didn't have an opinion on it one way or another. I asked him why, and he told me his reasons, and they just made sense. And I told him, I said, I'm behind you 110% on this. If this is what you want to do, you need to do it. I told him, I said, the Army is not going to be what breaks us up. If we're meant to be, we're going to be no matter what. So if this is what you want to do, do it, and I'll be here waiting for you when you get home. And it turned out I had actually was a month pregnant when he signed, we didn't know it. When Torin was born, he, it was just, it was wonderful watching him with him because he was instantly in love with his son. And he actually was able to wish him happy birthday because he died 10 days after Torin turned one. <laughs> she called him daddy within the first, I think like two months of our dating. That was his baby girl. She was instantly attached to him. She love, oh my God, she loved him. He had told to me once we were the greatest accomplishment he'd ever had, was being a father and a husband. Why we die? Look, so beautiful. So beautiful, yes. The picture's everywhere, and those pictures will stay up no matter what, because they will recognize his face. You know, I don't want it to be a situation where they're, who's that? They're gonna know that's, that's daddy, that's dad. And they're gonna understand when they get older, that their dad made the ultimate sacrifice to make sure they were taken care of. So that's what Norman said when he joined the guard. He said, no matter what happens, whether I'm alive or whether I'm dead, if I do this, I know you guys will be taken care of. And he quite literally gave his life for me and these kids. Headquarters, First United States Army, permanent order number 1-Alpha-08-101-009. Company D. 1st Battalion, 178th Infantry Regiment, and its members are hereby ordered to active duty service for an initial period of up to 400 days in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Somebody had ripped my heart out of my body. I knew it was going to happen. I mean, you know, when with the war that was going on, I just hoped it would happen not so soon because he hadn't been out of boot camp for very long. Our son had just been born. We weren't even married yet. We were fortunate enough, we got to talk on a daily basis. And so every day we Go made sure that we told each other how much we loved each other, how much we meant to each other, because we knew that that could be the last conversation we've ever, we will ever get to have. And I'm glad that we did that now. There's no doubt in my mind that he knew how much I loved him, and I did. I lived and I breathed for his military career and for him. And I had this horrible feeling, and I couldn't explain what it was. I didn't even know what it was at the time, but I just had this feeling of dread. And we had had a pact that we had made. We never said goodbye on the phone. It scared me. So it was always good night. That night, we told each other how much we loved each other, like we always did. We probably said I love you five or six different times before we got off the phone. And for some odd reason, we said goodbye. And we'd always correct each other if we slipped up on it. And I said goodbye, Norman. And he said, goodbye, Bridget, I love you. And click, we had the phone. And that was the last thing he ever said to me. I tried to call him that morning when I hadn't heard from him and the phone just rang and it rang and then it stopped ringing and nobody ever picked up and I knew something was really, really wrong. And my friend Sean calls me and he says, Bridget, there's two guys that are looking for you. He said, you need to prepare yourself because they might be government. If they are, you know why they're at your door. 
and I opened up my door and it was two people in A-class uniforms. And I looked at them and I said, why are you here? And there's like, Mrs. Kane, can we come in? I said, no, you can't. No, because you're not here to tell me that my husband is dead. I said, you're here to tell me that he's got injured, that me and my son are going to Germany, something. You are not here to tell me that he's dead. They tried to get me to sit down. And I finally said, just get it out already. Spit it out what you're here to say. And they gave their whole spiel, Mrs. Kane, I'm sorry to inform you. And I remember pacing twice and then I hit the floor. And a few seconds later, I came to again on my knees and my neighbor said I was screaming so loudly he could hear me in the house across the street. But I called my mom and the only thing I actually remember saying to her is Norman's dead, Norman's dead, Norman's dead. That's all I could say. That is the day a part of me died and that, that part will never come back to life again. Never. It, I don't know. You know, I'm proud of my husband and I couldn't love him more, but there isn't a day that goes by that I don't feel so overwhelmed by him being gone. He always said that we would be lost without each other and we really are. Planning out, you know, we had a life plan together and plans for the kids and, and one day that was gone. You live in a dream world. It, it still doesn't, I know it's real. I've seen him. I've said my goodbyes. I've buried him. I've been to his grave more times than I can count, but <laughs> it's still not real. It doesn't, it still hasn't sunk in to me. He's just on a mission. He can't call me, and this is all just a big, bad, terrible dream that I'm going to wake up from. And I know it's not. And I can just say that I'm thankful that my husband knew how much I supported him. He knew, he knew he was my hero. He knew he was my best friend. He knew how proud I was of him, and he knew how much I loved him. To me, every day should be Memorial Day. You know, I mean, I think it's great that they set aside certain days of the year, but to me, to me, honestly, every day, everybody in this country should take a minute and thank a troop, thank one of these soldiers, do something, send a care package, send a note, help a family, just acknowledge what they're doing, whether you agree with it or not. Because whether you agree with it or not, they're still fighting for you. You know, this country was built on the backs of men and women who risked everything and gave their lives to give us the foundation that we have. And my husband, he's one of the numbers that has kept it going. I think that people need to quit counting the numbers and think about the lives. You know, this is somebody's husband or brother or son or father. You know, these are, these are people who believe enough in the people of this country that they're willing to die for you and you'll never meet them. You'll never shake their hand. You'll never get to know who they are, but they still did it for you. That's the soldier he was. He was very good at his job. He was good at everything he did, whether it was being a soldier or being a father or being a husband or just being a friend. He was good at everything. And it's just important for people to know that they're never just numbers. These are people who mattered and people that will always matter and they will never be forgotten. And it's up to just the family members and the friends to make sure they stay alive. You know, and the way I look at it is, granted, I didn't have them in my life as long as I wanted to, but I wouldn't have traded a second of it. I wouldn't have given a second of it up. I would do it all over again, even if I knew it was gonna end this way. And I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be able to say I was married to him. I'm lucky to be able to say that I knew him. I'm lucky that I can say that I was married to the best man I've ever known, to my hero, my best friend, and my life will forever be better because he was in it, even if it was just for a split second in time of what it feels like. My life is better because of him. I'm better because of him. And my kids are too. <laughs> He's still around. He's still with me, and I know he is, and he will continue to be so for a very long time.